Hey guys, so in my previous video, I was talking about why I was selling my G Pro Wireless. And here I am, I bought another, and I'm going to show you guys three mods that I've done to it that now make it my daily driver at work, and I'm very happy with it. So first, I'll give a little overview of each mod, and then stick around in the video if you want to know how to do that mod. I have some good tips and, and methods, I think. So first of all is changing the coating. That was my main gripe about the mouse. I have dry hands, I wanted something more glossy. So this was an easy solution with some steel wool. If you're going to use steel wool, please listen to the end of the video because it's an irreversible process and I think I have some good tips to help you out. Second thing was reducing the weight. I think I've brought the weight down maybe 8 or 9 grams. 71. So <clears throat> how I did that was basically desoldering the and removing the side buttons and those components and also removing the magnets from the power play puck on the bottom. Those two square holes there. Very easy to do. It only saves about three or four grams alone with those magnets and all you have to do is unplug one connector. So that's at least a recommendation. But the side buttons, that's a little bit more involved. And the third mod is lubricating the scroll wheel. It's a very minor thing, but it helps. Um, it gets rid of some of the gritty feel and makes the steps a little bit smoother between steps. On some mice, I do this to all my mice because it's, you know, once you have the grease, it's effectively zero dollars per mouse. But it does a good job of filling in the gaps between the steps on some mice. This one, it made the scroll wheel more silent, but it didn't really improve the tactility. So now I'm going to discuss a little bit more in depth how I did these mods, give you guys some tips, and at the end of the video I have a couple of bonus mods for you too. So first of all with the coating, if you're going to use steel wool, well first of all you want to use a very mild abrasive, do not use sandpaper, do not use a scouring pad, you want to use something very mild, you don't want to be leaving deep grooves. And one way to avoid leaving deep grooves is you want to be light and you want to go in circular motions. You don't want to leave streak lines all over the mouse by going in one direction at a time. And in fact, you guys can see even being as careful as I could, I definitely have left grooves in my mouse. And while they're not visible from, you know, a distance, if you have good lighting, you can absolutely tell that they're there. Also, if you're using steel wool, steel wool is magnetic. And this mouse has a whole bunch of magnets in it. And as you polish, you're going to leave behind steel wool residue and this residue is going to find its way into your mouse. So I highly recommend using steel wool with the mouse fully disassembled. Uh, alternative methods you could try are also um, there's wet sandpapers like automotive sandpapers. There'll be one, two or three thousand grit. Um, those are commonly used on, on yeah, automotive applications where you want the paint to still maintain a good finish. You can also try, um, my next thing is I want to use an even less um, strong abrasive as this. I want to try some sort of jewelry polish or toothpaste is an abrasive, a mild abrasive. You get a rag and, and some sort of jewelry polish, I think that would clean this up very nicely. So stay tuned for that. Next, let's move on to how I reduce the weight. So easy picking, e easy low hanging fruit was getting rid of the uh, power play puck and the magnets associated with that. Those magnets also do carry, if you're into the power play thing, they also carry the electrical uh, uh, power to the puck. So you do remove that function, but it's a simple one connector. You do have to disassemble the mouse, the seven screws on the bottom here, but that's it. Single connector, um, that was three or four grams. And then to remove the side buttons here, well, I first wanted to remove, inside of the mouse you have this blue piece and that's what the side buttons click on. And that has a couple magnets in it. So I wanted to get rid of that too. Because again that was 2 or 3 grams. But you remove this blue piece. And then you're left with this. You know more or less this gap right here on the mouse. And the PCB as well. And the PCB is not going to be used. So there's my two side buttons. So I decided to desolder that too. You don't have to. But it does save 1 or 2 grams. You can see there's three little fingers there that you have to desolder, and then the whole daughter board comes out. But then you're left with a gap here with no buttons. And so a solution to that, I didn't care about the extra half gram that these buttons add. I wanted to have a nice smooth feel. So I added these buttons back. These are just the blanks. There's nothing underneath this. 
um, and I just used the slightest bit of super glue on the corners. So right there, and then one at the center on both buttons. And just the slightest amount, because I want this to be a reversible process. Hopefully, I don't know if it's going to be. But I hope that I can maybe punch those out with a screwdriver if I decide to become a left-handed mouse user. So then lastly, the scroll wheel. So lubricating the scroll wheel, again, you want to use some sort of non-petroleum-based lubricant. I don't know, maybe you can. I don't know if the if it won't eat away at the plastic until maybe, you know, 5, 10 years. I don't know. Um, the lubric uh, petroleum-based lubricants would include something like Vaseline. Um, I would use something uh, much more um, not as chemically harsh. This is something that I picked up from my local RC hobby shop. I don't know. It wasn't cheap, but it works. And again, if you do this to multiple, if you own multiple mice and you use multiple mice, do this to all your scroll wheels because it's really cheap and it's easy. So how you do it? Here I have an encoder wheel. So right here at the bottom is where it attaches to the PCB. And then you can see the black plastic piece inside of the encoder. There's little detents and a little sheet metal tab. And if my hands were actually steady, you'd be able to see that tab wiggling back and forth. But you want to fill the grease. You want to fill the grease between the metal and the plastic. It smooths out the feeling, gives it less of a gritty, rough texture. Um, it doesn't really change the tactility much. Um, I have had mice that it makes it feel less tactile, but I don't know, then you sort of spin it after a while and it, I don't know, it stays the same. It just makes it more quiet, which is really nice. And I'll usually lubricate um, the, the shaft here too, because the shaft usually rides on usually some sort of holder or it'll ride on mouse button three and so. I would recommend, though, if you do lubricate this, be very, very conservative because you don't want grease getting into mouse button three and then you have issues. So, as promised, here's a couple other bonus things that I've done to my mouse for those of you who have stuck around this far in the video. One is obviously switching mouse button one and two. Anyone who's into desoldering, um, mouse buttons are just like mechanical keyboard switches. Each one has a different feel. Um, different actuation point, actuation force, feedback, bounce back. I personally like more springy switches. I hate the Omron switches that everybody loves nowadays. They're too mushy feeling. The click on them is too high pitched. Um, now I switch to, I believe, left mouse here is a clear Juano. And right mouse is a red Juano. So red Juano is, I think, their stiffest and clear is their lightest. Both of them have a very good, loud, tactile feel, and they spring back up quickly. And this is my personal preference. Another small mod I've done, the mouse feet on the bottom, because I'm taking this mouse apart a few times. Um, after a while, you get sick of taking off the feet and destroying them, so I just cut them and then sort of polish the edges too so they don't rub on the pad. And then up here... I just removed that one completely and added a Zowie foot. And last thing, um, I cut my mine was one of the older copies of the G Pro Wireless. I got this used for like ninety ninety five dollars. So I cut the a uh, little bit more of a groove there with an X-Acto knife and then polished it off with some sandpaper and then with steel wool. So that's a tour of my G Pro Wireless. This I use every day at work for way too many hours and I'm very happy with it. I sort of had to switch to a wireless mouse because our entire office is switching to wireless mice and when I'm sitting there with a rainbow paracorded cable, people sort of look at me funny like, oh, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to switch. And wireless it has so many advantages and the G Pro Wireless is a fantastic shape. The buttons are great, the texture is great now, the scroll wheel is great, the weight is phenomenal at 71 grams for a wireless mouse. I really couldn't be happier. So thank you guys very much for watching, and stay tuned for the next video where I show you how to paracord your G Pro wireless.